glad to know this evening, like I am every day, that God is here to hear our prayers. Amen. But see, we have to call upon Him. Is that right? How do we do that? With our voice, with our heart, with our spirit. We don't have to write letters. We don't have to pick up the phone. We can just talk to our Lord because He is our God. You know, back in the Old Covenant days, guys, back in the Old Testament, let's go to Psalms for an example. David used to say, Dear Lord, my spirit is weak. Answer me. God, where are you at? Does anybody ever think that? Lord, where are you at? I am in need. I am in despair. Where are you at, Lord? But God says if we would just call upon him that he would come and take care of us. Now, David got weary. Does all of you know that? Now, David was a tough guy. David was a humble guy. David was a godly man. But he would get weak, and he would get weary. Hmm. Do you ever get like that? I'm sure he would even get depressed some days, because some days it was like, Lord, Lord, are you, are you there? Anybody ever been there? Lord, do you hear my cry? The Bible tells us that if we cry out into the Lord, that he would hear us. Is that right? It does not say that he's going to answer us exactly right on our timing. Here's what we fail to remember, people, just like David did. God would hear his pleas. God would hear his mercy callings. But God says, I'll take care of it, son. See, we don't listen. <clears throat> we don't listen. We don't be still. We don't listen to what God has to tell us. We're so microwavable. We're so fast responsive. We want things now. We pray about things. And sometimes we see things happen quite a way, sometimes close, sometimes we might not see them happen. Does it mean God's not listening to you? No, that's not what that means. Now, I truly believe this tonight. I truly believe if we serve God with a true full heart, I truly believe that God will answer us. And I truly believe with a true repentance, pure heart, that God does hear everything we say. Hmm. Got quiet in the place. Do you believe that tonight? I believe if we are standing on God's word, if we are standing on that rock, if we are standing on that foundation that God has given us through Jesus Christ and say, God, I need you to listen to me. Guess what? He is going to listen to you. Now, the Bible tells me and the Bible tells you that a man with a repentant, true, fully heart, God is going to hear their pleas. But my Bible also tells me that God is not going to hear the worldly person's plea unless it's a repentance prayer. Yeah, I'm not going to look at you now because a lot of you don't like to hear that. It's in the Word. It's in the Word. God says sinners out in the world until they repent, He does not hear their prayers. Woo! Glad I got some amens on that. I can remember when I was a sinner, I can remember when I did all kinds of things that I shouldn't have done, and I felt like I was still being blessed. You know why? Because it was the prayer of a righteous man. It's because other people was praying for me. Let me tell you something now, guys. It wasn't my prayers. It was Sister Sue on down the line. Amen? But when I got to the realization, when I come to the point in my spiritual walk, wow, I got it. I got it. I, I, see what, I see what God's talking about now. Does it ever take you a while to catch on to something? You might catch that tomorrow too, right? Yep. Amen? But see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. God shows us. Now, you know I'm from Missouri, and that's the show me state. Amen. So I tell God, show me. Show me. You be quiet over Sister Sue. Show me. You show me what you want me to know. You show me what to do. 
But you know what? Leaving all jokes aside, we should all be saying that. Show me, God. Show me. Uh, tell me. Show me. Tell me what to do. God, is, is, is this the right way to approach this, or should I approach it this way? You know what you need to do? Say, Lord, you guide my path today. Lord, you're, the, you're, the, you're my lamp. You're, you're the light. So I want you to show me what to do. David was starting to get frustrated. David was starting to get worried. <clears throat> you don't do that, do you? We're Christians. You don't worry, do you? You might get a little antsy on things. You might get a little concerned of things. But please don't tell me you worry. Because worrying is from the devil. Now, we can be concerned. We can be concerned. Don't take me wrong. But don't worry yourself to the stress mode. We're too blessed, my friends, to be stressed. Oh, yeah, some of you are looking at me like, yeah, you don't know my problems. Well, let me turn around and tell this man up here, Jesus, now you caught my back, okay? We all got problems. We all got situations. We all got issues. But let me tell you something. That man right there says he'd take care of it. You know what your problem is? You try to take care of it. Woo. You try to take care of it. You try to handle all these situations on your own without asking your father. Yeah, mm-hmm. That got you, didn't it? You got to start asking your father to help you. I told one of the mothers today, I said, you know what? He's even your mother. Does everybody believe that today? Amen. He's your father. He's your mother. He can be your wife. He can be your husband. He can be whoever you want him to be. Big brother's good. Big brother's good. It's true. But he's always there. <clears throat> David wondered. David would say, answer me. Has anybody ever asked God that? Answer me. Yeah, uh-huh. None of you want to admit it, but you know you have. We wonder sometimes where God is. I used to wonder if he goes on vacations. I thought, man, the man's got to get tired. He surely goes on vacation. He surely got to sleep. He surely got to rest. No! He's omnipotent. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's forever, ever, ever who he is, and he's always here for you. But he had to keep telling David that. Don't laugh at David, because we're all Davids tonight. Don't laugh at him. We've all questioned God before. Don't say you have not. We've questioned God, and we've asked God, where are you at? Why is this happening in my life? What is going on? What am I doing wrong? Sometimes you're not doing nothing wrong. Sometimes things just happen. Because you know what? We have a guy down there that's called the devil. You know, that slew foot with all them imps that he has, and they're steadily after you and me. Well, the devil's not after me. Ho-ho, you must not be a Christian then. Yeah, he already got you on the back burner. Ha-ha-ha. Ha-ha, he's got you on the back burner. He sure does. Well, I don't want to be on his burner. I don't want to be anywhere close to his burners. And I don't want you to be nowhere close to his burners. So David said, answer me. You got your Bibles tonight? Take them and go to the book of Psalms. <clears throat> We're going to be in Psalm 143. Psalm 143. As if you haven't figured it out yet, the name of this sermon tonight is going to be Answer Me. Now, this is David talking. We're going to talk about old brother David tonight just a little bit. We're going to cover 7 through 12. When you get to Psalm 143... Would you please say amen? amen? If you're not there, say amen. amen. Okay, keep finding. Keep looking. Now, all of you that said that, say amen when you get there. Amen. Hey, we're almost there, aren't we? Amen. Okay, Psalms 143, my friends. Let's start in verse number 7. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be likened to them that go down into the pit. 
Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee. Hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies and destroy all of them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. Are you a servant of God tonight? Everybody look at number 12. And of the mercy cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. Let's all say this together. For I am thy servant. Amen? Are you okay with that tonight? Amen. Amen. We're a servant. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the opportunity to bring your word tonight. The words that you have given me. So, Lord, I thank you for that. But I ask for your for your leading of this, Lord, your perfect way and your perfect will. In Jesus' name, if we could all say amen. amen. Oh, David, answer me, Lord. Oh, Lord, answer me. Come quickly. Is that what it says in verse number 7? Look at that. Hear me speedily. In case you don't know what that means, hear me now. I'm here. I'm talking. Hear me, God. Where are you at? Hurriedly, speedily, help me, God, to hear your voice. Help me, Lord, to know that you are listening to me. Come quickly, Lord, and answer me. You know why? Because his spirit was weak. Whoops. Don't turn away from me, O Lord. Look at number seven. My spirit faileth. You know what David is saying? The same thing that we've all thought before in our lives. My spirit is getting weak. Huh? My spirit is getting low. My spirit, it seems like it's failing. My spirit level has gone down. Can everybody agree with that tonight? We have levels of a spirit, don't we? Some days we're up on that mountain, boy, our spirit's high. But boy, some days we're down in them valleys. Our spirit, now come on. It gets weakened, and it feels like it's failing us. David said, God, what is wrong? What is going on? We go through the same thing, friends. We do. We go through the same things because our spirit gets weak. You know, guys, the spirit is something that God has blessed us with. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit that works through us is a manifestation of what God's power can do through us. Now, we talk about seeing miracles. We talk about seeing God's power. Well, let me tell you something now, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to get our spirits picked back up where they belong. Now, come on. Our spirit sometimes is down in the low level. God's going... Whoa, you're way down there. Come on, child. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's go. I believe he talks just like that. Come on, come on, let's go. Come on. Now look, now look, look. I brought you this far. Come on now. You're not going to stay there. Oh, look at that one little sheep back here. Here he goes. He's going to get you. He's going to come back and get you. You keep rejecting and rejecting and rejecting. Guess what? He's going to be saddened. Yep, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. I don't like to see Jesus weep. And I know Jesus has wept many times over me. I'm pretty sure he's probably wept over you before. But see, the spirit that God has blessed us with is something that he wants us to keep built up. Amen? We got we to keep that spirit up. It's hard to do some days. Mm -hmm. 
Look at me. It's hard to have a high spirits some days, isn't it? It's hard to be really pumped up for God when things are going wrong. I want to be so happy. I want my spirit to be so high in God, no matter what happens. I want to be able to be thankful for everything I got. I want my spirit level to stay high. I don't want to get comfortable with that. You follow me? I don't want to get comfortable with that because I know God can build us more and more and more every single minute of our life. Does everybody agree to that tonight? Do you feel tonight that God is continuously, continuously working on us, continuously bringing our spirits up? You know why? Because he's a good God. He's a great God. He don't want you to just get mediocre. He don't want you to get low. He don't want you to just be in the medium where you can just go either way. He wants you up on high level. Oh, David, he was depressed. He was starting to get a little bit down. <clears throat> David was losing hope. He was caught up into fear. He was caught up into depression. We do the same thing, friends. We should be like David and go or come to the Lord for answers. We're so concerned sometimes about answering our own problems. We don't let God take control. Huh? We don't let God take control of the situation and we're going to fail. It's that simple. You're going to fail. If you try to handle your own situations. I didn't get many amens on that. You're going to fail. Now I'm here to tell you now. Now David is going to understand this. And David is going to realize this. But David is going through. A low spot in his life. Has any of you ever been there? He's going through a turmoil. He's way down in the valley. It feels good to be on top of that mountain doesn't it? But you know, the top of that mountain can also get rocky. Am I right? So God has to kind of knock us down just a little bit there and let us realize that he's the one that took us there. I believe sometimes we get the big head. I believe sometimes we think we got there on our own. I think sometimes we think we accomplished that on our own. I think sometimes we think we're so smart that we accomplished this and we took care of that, and man, we got it going on. Well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Without God, you wouldn't have got none of it done. You wouldn't have accomplished any of it. I'm even talking about the sinners. Now, God helps everybody, does he not? Now, when you're out in the world and you're sinning and the prayer of a righteous man keeps praying for you, God is going to help you through that person and God is going to try to get you up so he can save you. See, God wants to save you. God wants to save everybody. He's coming soon. Does everybody realize that tonight? He wants to save you. He wants to know that you're saved. Amen. Let's go to verse number 8 because it says, Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Now, guys, what was the answers that David was trying to find? And he was kind of anxious about it. It's the same answers that we want to receive today. We want answers from God, do we not? We want to understand and we want to know what God has for us. Then you get on into verse number 8 and he's talking about let me hear you, okay? Cause me to hear thy love and kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Does everybody in here tonight trust God? Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. We also want to hear God's voice too, don't we? We want to hear God's word. We want to hear his voice. We want to someday be able to see that smile that he's got for each and every one of you. Amen? We want to hear his voice because his voice, now come on guys, gives you strength. 
When you hear his voice, it's going to pick you up. And it's going to give you strength. It's going to give you encouragement, as we all need. Do we all need encouragement? Quit kicking the old dog when it's down. Encourage each other. Amen? That's what David was. David was going through a slump in his life, just as you and I do. But God wasn't going, stay down there, boy. That's what you get for not listening. No, God steadily, right? God steadily trying to get him back up. Now, you're my son. Now, come on, boy, let's get up and go. Now, I brought you too far to let go of you now. Here's what I got to tell you tonight. That's every one of you. You've come too far to back down now. You've come too far to stay down. You've come too far. You've spent too many days serving God. I don't care if you just started serving God yesterday. You're on the roll. God says, you know what? You're mine, and I'm going to keep you mine. Remember, I don't want to see Jesus weep. I know you don't either. I think he's already been through enough suffering. What does everybody think? I think he's been through enough. Why do we want to put him through anymore? Yes, the world will let him down. And let me go ahead and surprise you. Yes, the world will let you down. But let me tell you something. God will not let you down. But see, here's the thing. God says, well, here's the sinners. Yes, they're not living for me, but I love them. I love them with all I got. And I expect my people, my saved people, to pray for these people. You know what, guys? The church is for sinners. Sinners walk into church. I once walked into church as a sinner. Did you? And I'm so thankful that God accepted me. And I'm so thankful that God uh, pricked my heart. I'm so thankful that I could feel that, huh? I could feel that draw. I could feel something going on. Like the man that was mentioned this morning, Rusty. He almost came to church. Let me remind you of this. There's been many times you almost come to church. Come on now, guys. There's many times I almost went to church. But guess what? Ooh, that was a little bit of step ahead. That was a half a step ahead. Because it used to be, uh-uh. No, right? Uh-uh. Oh, well, all of a sudden, maybe. Now, guys, think about it. That's a big step. Now, the next step is going to be, okay, okay. I'll try it. He might get all the way to the door right here. He might turn around and go back to his truck. That's okay. Keep praying. Guess what? Maybe next Sunday, he might come in here full blast. He might come in here and plow all of you down. Nothing's impossible on the call of the name of Jesus. Nothing, because all things is possible through my God, because the Bible says it is true. And if my Bible says it's true, I believe it. Do you believe it tonight? Because we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Woo! Man, I tell you what, God gives you strength. God's not dead. <laughs> God's not dead. God is still alive. We serve an awesome God. Hey, guess what? The same God that David was serving. Same one, right? The very same God. And David wasn't in town yesterday. This was a while back, my friends. Let me tell you something. This before even Jesus got here. Whew. That had been a long time ago, huh? But it's the same God. Are you blessed tonight that we have a God that is so loving, so kind? Verse number nine. Has any of you ever said this? Deliver me, O Lord. <laughs> Here's the good part from mine enemies. Hmm. Remember that, guys. I flee unto thee to hide me. You know, guys, we want the blessings. I want the blessings. I want you to have the blessings of the 
experiences of the way that God can hide you from things. Now, what are you talking about, hide you from things? God says he would protect us. God says he would take us in. Well, guess what? I totally believe that God hides us sometimes from different situations in life. I believe he actually hides us sometimes from some people that might be after you. Hey, this is a cruel world, my friends. Come on, guys. It's a bad world. It's cruel. There's no morals. What's morals? There's no such thing left as morals anymore. The world is cruel. The world is mean. The world is bad. And the world don't like you. Am I right? Most of the world don't like him, let alone you. Is everybody in here tonight, everybody in here, do you have at least one enemy? <laughs> Never mind. Okay, you caught that, did you? <clears throat> I was going to say, everybody better say yes, right? I know one guy that's after us all the time, and he's our enemy. Now, here comes your answer to what I just said. How many times has God hidden you from Satan? How many times has God put his arm around you and moved you out of that? I've said this before, and I'll probably always say it. I should have been dead a long time ago. I should have been. I mean, I've had cars fall on me. I've had all kinds of things happen to me that should have killed me. I'm serious. And back when that car fell on me, I wasn't saved. So I didn't say, thank you, Jesus, for this lovely car falling on me. I didn't say that. I'm not going to tell you what I said. It, it, it what? Yeah. I said, my little city, sweetie Sue, would you come and get this car up off me, please? Oh, I didn't say it quite like that. <clears throat> yeah. But God protected me. Am I right? God I wasn't even saved. Why did God save me that day? No, no, no. Sister Sue was not saved then either. Now, now it's getting deep. Why was I not crushed? He had a plan. Oh, what do I tell you people all the time? God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. Did God know I would be here preaching? You better believe he did that. Did God know when you should have been killed, probably more than once in life, amen? Did he know you'd be here tonight? Sure did. I tell you, he works in miraculous ways. I mean, he really, really does. And David, like us, like you, started losing hope. How do we lose hope in God? What happens to us? How? Do we lose hope in God when we're so on fire for God that all of a sudden, have you ever seen a pumped up Christian man? I mean, hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen, jumping. Next time you see him, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with the picture, guys? Where's the, what happened to the spirit? Where's it at? In their shoes? Yeah, they walked off and left their spirit, Amen. Oh, we get sad. We get sad. We get discouraged. We get concerned. But you know what, guys? That's part of it. That's part of it. I'm here to tell you tonight that David, amongst many other people, went through the same things. They went through the same trials, the same tribulations. They went through the same agonies. Right? They had reasons back then to get concerned about things, just as you and I do today. Verse number 10. Teach me to do thy will. Now, saints, let me tell you something. We should be saying that every morning. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Huh? Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Hmm. What's the land of uprightness? Does anybody know? It's something that God gives us. It's a land to get away from enemies. God says he's going to protect us. He's going to save us. 
He's going to move us into the land of rights, of rightness. He's going to move us into the land of protection. I want God to protect you. Do you want to be protected? Do you want God's shelter over you at all time? God says he has our back. He tells us in the Bible that we got to wear the full armor of God. I've had people ask me before, well, why is the back open? The back's not open. God's got your back. Amen? But see, we have to wear that full armor of God. You know what, guys? A lot of times we're bad about leaving the house without the armor. Sometimes we're in a hurry, and sometimes we take half of it. Ooh, guess what? You're only going to be by half protected that day, amen? God says we got to fully be covered. we got to be fully equipped. Oh, I tell you, sometimes that's hard to do, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard to take the full armor out that door. You know why I say that? Because you had a bad day the day before. You had a bad night of rest. You're trying to get the kids ready for school. They don't want to get up out of the bed. They want to argue with you. You want to gripe. You go outside and your car has four flat tires. Praise the Lord. God's good. Let's walk to school, guys. Amen. No. But I want to be that way. How about you? Wouldn't that be nice to be that way? Now, some of you looking at me like, now, there is no way we could do that. Oh, there is a way. All things are possible with the call of Jesus. But now, wait a minute. David didn't have Jesus back then. That's okay. He had the Lord. He had the Father. And guess what? Believe this or not, we have it better nowadays than David did. What do you think? Because, see, God sent his only begotten son to die for you and I. And it's easier to go through Jesus to the Father than it was to get to the Father back then. Because let me tell you something back then. I was telling somebody the other day, God got mad at a bunch of people back then. He just swallowed them up. I mean, whoop, they was all gone. And it would have been about my look, I guess I can go ahead and say. I'd been walking with all them bad people. I'd been gone. Yeah, I turned into a pillar of salt. But oh, thank God. You know, guys, I think we are a privileged people. I do. I think we are a privileged people. I think we are the privileged people that's going to see the return of the Lord. What kind of a privilege is that? Ooh, I think it's awesome. We're privileged. We're a wonderful, blessed, privileged people. I can't say it any plainer than that. Does everybody agree to that tonight? Some of you looking at me like, well, I sure go through a lot to be privileged. You're alive, aren't you? You walked in here, didn't you? As Sister Sue said this morning, doesn't look like anybody in here is starving to me. It doesn't look like anybody in here to me is malnutrition today. Oh, flip your TV on. Start watching the news for a little while. Look at the country of Africa. Look at all them other countries. Got all these starving people in there. Look at these terrorists over there that is, uh, you know, kidnapping all these girls and things. Guys, we got a blessed nation here. But it's time that we do something. It's time that we help God get this nation up out of where it's at. Well, now we can't do that. We're just a little bitty church in Orange, Texas. But let me tell you something, huh? Prayers, prayers, prayers can go a long ways, amen? Who believes this? Prayers can reach all the way around the world and back. Prayers can reach heaven. We already know that, don't we? So even in the depression that David was going through, even so, sometimes we go through depression and low things like this in life. God says, I'll answer you. God says, focus upon me. Focus upon the things above. You're going to be all right. 11 and 12 says this, Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. 
And of thy mercy cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Now, guys, <clears throat> David realized and David knew that he had a great work to do for the Lord. In all sincerity tonight, everyone in this building tonight has a great work ahead of you. You have a great plan that God has for you. And David's like, okay, I have things that I got to do. Huh? Do we think about that or do we just think of other things that we got to do? I hope we can start focusing on what does God have for me to do? David said, I'm ready. But there's a price to pay. Amen? There's a price to pay when we serve Lord, serve the Lord. Finally, God answers sometimes our prayers. Finally answers our prayers. And isn't it great to know that he still listens to us and that he does still answer us? But I'm going to tell you like he was telling David. you got to get up and you got to move. You got to ask God for his protection. You got to ask God for his guidance. You've got to ask God for his deliverance of things. Now listen carefully to me. <clears throat> Some of us has things in our way of serving God wholeheartedly. Everybody listening carefully? When we have things in the way of us serving God wholly, he can't fulfill that purpose with you. God says, you know what? I've sifted. I've sifted. Huh? Come on. I've sifted. I've sifted. I've sifted. I still see. I still see garbage coming out. Like that song was shaking a while ago. Huh? Amen? Well, God's getting tired of shaking now. He thinks to shake us all right. Amen? He's going to shake us the way we don't want to shake. God says, you know what? I feel like I've sifted you long enough. Now, I feel like the stuff needs to be gone out of your life, the things, the issues, the problems, the, the difficulties. It could be as small as gossiping. Ooh. It could be as small as Telling a little fib here or there. It could be as small as, ooh, talking about people. Ooh, talking about people. Boy, I can remember the day when that was fun. Man, I know. We'd sit, we'd sit there with our coffee and smoke our cigarettes and talk about people. Man, we'd sit there for two hours. Now you can't make us pray for two hours in a week. Now, something wrong with the picture, right? Right? Things like that, guys, is in the way. Do you believe that? They are. They get in our way of serving God wholly. Now, in saying that, I would like to ask you this tonight. Is everybody out here tonight in this building where you would like to be? Or, or do you feel like you could maybe go farther with God has for you? Or do you feel like tonight that there's still some things in your way? And, oh, I ask God that you're ready to get them out of your way. In your righteousness, God, bring me out of distress. In your righteousness, God, bring me away from them things that's pulling me under, that's pulling me down. We all know that God's coming soon. And we all know when we get called to that judgment line and you got things in your life that you know is not pleasing with God and you're just standing there waiting all smiling like, yeah, but I know I get to go. Guess what? God's going to say, I knew you not. Depart from me. But, 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 God. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't have time for that. Move. Come on. Right? That's how it's going to be. Well, what a rude God we serve. No! How much time are you trying to get there? God's worked on you and worked on you and worked on you. Ain't nothing rude about God. 
It's where is your slackness, huh? So in closing, let me say this. David had to be reminded, okay? David had to be reminded of what God could do for him. Although he had seen many of things, just as you have, all of you have seen miracles in your life, haven't you? It's probably a miracle just knowing that yourself is here tonight. Right? That's a miracle right there. It's a miracle when you wake up every morning. I had a guy tell me that morning, I said, how are you doing today, man? He said, man, I just felt so lucky I was able to wake up today. I said, okay. I feel more like blessed. When you wake up in the morning, when you stretch and you don't feel that pine box, jump up and holler. Jump up and holler and say, thank you, God, for another day. I want to be forgiven for anything that's not right in my life. I want to know that when I lay my head down tonight to go to sleep, if I don't wake up in this old world, I want to know where I'm at in heaven. I want all of you to be the same. I want you to know that God loves you. So with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, I'd like to have an altar call tonight. Now I want you to think. As you're meditating tonight with your eyes closed and your heads bowed, I want you to really think, God, is there something in my life that really that really might keep me from the call? If there is, Lord, would you please show it to me? Now, talking about answering prayers pretty quickly as we talked about a while ago, I believe this is going to be one of the quickest prayers ever answered in your life tonight. Say, God... Is there something in my life that I'm not doing that's not pleasing with you? And God, would that actually, would that really stop me from getting into the gates of heaven? Now, if you would say that tonight with a true, sincere, pure heart, I believe God's going to give you an answer pretty quick. Now, think about that for a minute. Are you sure that you are sure? I had a man come to me this morning after church. You know, there's a lot of things I don't understand, and I know I don't live the way I should, but I feel like heaven's wide open for me. Let me tell you something. God's an almighty God. God's a forgiving God. But you have to be forgiving, forgiven, while you're alive. Am I right? You have to be forgiven now. You can't die, or you can't wait for the rapture to come and go up there and say, now, God, this is the only little issue I had left in my life, so I know it's okay. Nope, it's not okay. Think about it. Think about it. Answer me, O Lord. I'm pleading unto you. I want heaven to be my home. God, I'm asking you to restore me tonight. God, you see what I'm going through. Lord, you see what my house is like. You see what my job is like. You see what my no job is like. You see what my finances are like. You see what the marriages are like. You see how my kids are. You see how my neighbors are. And, Lord, I just can't quit talking about them. Lord, I know you understand because they make me so mad I want to pull their heads off. So, Lord, I know you forgive me for that. I think it's time to ask God tonight to totally forgive us. So the altar is open now. I hope you're still talking with God. I'm going to be quiet for a minute and let him talk to you.